So just as an environmental chemist, do you think that living in the United States, you and I are both at UCLA, mm -hmm. do you think that it is even um, a discussion or an issue that we're talking about these things? Absolutely, the absolutely. There's plenty of pollution out there in the environment from many years when pollution wasn't regulated. The, pollu the heavy metals are still out there. So we have a lot of legacy pollution, even though our laws have improved regarding pollution, we still have legacy sources of, of pollution, um, and including uh, larger fish would have accumulated mercury that's been accumulating for quite some time in, in the environment. So they would biomagnify in certain fish. Okay, so the, the four that I really want to touch on are um, mercury, arsenic, lead, and cadmium. So maybe we can go one at a time. Sure. So should we talk about mercury first? That's fine. That's your area. <laughs> yeah, that's my area, yeah. So mercury, um, what are, what, in, in your opinion, what are the major concerns or, or what are the major sources of in, our, in our environment of mercury? Okay, so the major concerns, so the effects on us would be central nervous system mm -hmm. disorders, developmental delays, neurological tics um, that can happen if there's too much mercury in our diet. That's um, what I've read. I'm not a toxicologist, but I do understand that that's the impact of mercury. Um, as far as the, the source, mercury is uh, tricky because the source, it's a global pollutant. So it doesn't matter really where on earth it is emitted. So say it's coming from coal burning in a country far away, that, that mercury can travel throughout um, the atmosphere and then be deposited in ecosystems in uh, anywhere, even in the Arctic regions. And then certain bacteria will transform it into a, the more toxic form, which is methylmercury, which also has a very high tendency to bioaccumulate. So that methylmercury will work its way up food chains. And it's a process called biomagnification, where it's actually magnifying in concentration as it goes up the trophic level. So that's why we really don't worry about mercury in, in tap water. It hasn't had a chance to biomagnify yet. It's just in the water, usually at very low levels. It's mostly, um, or even plant foods aren't something where we typically worry about mercury. It's more of the higher trophic level fish, where the mercury has had several um, trophic levels, meaning levels of predation in the environment for um, to allow the concentration to get quite high. So what you're saying is that fish is the major concern for mercury, and mm -hmm. it's because it's been around for so long that it's just accumulated over time in fish. Right. Mercury emitted many years ago is still out there in the environment and can biomagnify up the, the food chain. Okay. To, so there are some recommendations about women who are pregnant and nursing to avoid certain fish. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of um, doctors, a lot of you know, scientists are basically saying don't eat more than two meals a week of fish. However, there's a lot of benefits of eating fish. Mm -hmm. The omega-3 fatty acids, a lot of DHA, which has been shown to actually help with neurodevelopment and right. cognitive development. Yes. So, do you recommend or do you have any um, opinion about eating certain fish or avoiding certain fish? I, I definitely know there are certain fish to be avoided. Uh, for example, swordfish, mm -hmm. shark, they're at a high trophic level, so certainly just should be completely eliminated from the diet.